My name is Sarah Ballard. I'm a Torres Fellow for Exoplanetary Science at MIT. And this is Inside a Scientist's Suitcase. Um, my science, broadly, concerns planets orbiting other stars, and I, in particular, am an observer, uh, as opposed to a theorist, of planets orbiting other stars. When I say exoplanet, what I'm referring to is a planet orbiting any star other than our sun. Although I don't play favorites, I like the solar system planets too. <laughs> I started my PhD when we knew about a handful of planets uncovered with the method that's my favorite method for finding planets, and, and there were thousands by the end of my PhD. That's a period of five years in which I felt born up in a wave of planet discovery. <laughs> I've heard it said, and I think to myself, that often the idea that you're waiting for um, to help you unlock something you've been stuck on for a long time, that idea is in another person's head. <laughs> you have only to communicate with them and hear them talk about their work. So when I travel, I usually have a whole routine. When I travel, I usually have like a really fancy face mask. I didn't actually bring one from my room, but I, I have like a really nice face mask, like a very luxurious one. I sit in a hot bath and I watch trash TV. That's a routine. I will not stray from that routine. It makes me feel great. It makes me feel super relaxed. I also make sure um, that I'm reading fiction. So I'm reading um, this Jeffrey Eugenides book right now, but after a whole day of thinking about life through a scientific lens, I like to think about it through a very narrative human lens. Um, even if I feel very overwhelmed and tired of talking with people, I find that fiction makes me feel connected. Um, so I, I really do bring this guitar with me um, when I travel, uh, every time that I travel. So at conferences now, I read or I saw in a TED talk or something that when you type notes, you don't remember things as well as when you write them. But I would, I frankly always lose just loose papers. Like that's just not like a viable long-term plan. So I invested um, in an iPad where you can actually take notes uh, with writing. So, you know, here for example um, is a page of notes that I took in a talk yesterday by Andrew Mann. Um, so I can sort of quickly jot down not only the notes of the talk, maybe a relevant figure, and according to whatever sociolo sociology research this was, I'll remember it better. In fact, when I broke it down, what I was thinking was that perhaps not only with my science, but by working to make science culture more equitable, ultimately, hundreds of years down the road, perhaps there would be a, a child a young boy or a young girl who would have the idea about how to travel between stars and not only because of my exoplanet work but because of my equity work that person would have the opportunity to go to school to go to college and ultimately contribute to that chapter of the human story my other favorite part of my job is when I get to be the person that I most wanted to see when I was a younger scientist so when I have younger women scientists approach me now with the types of questions I once had I, for a very long time, I couldn't reconcile having sort of a playful and gentle nature with scientific excellence. That was a real uh, challenge for me. And now I realize that those are strengths. 